Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Got an interesting email, we'll go into some questions if people have questions for questions and I don't know if we have possibly any answers. We got an interesting email that somebody said that they're studying eschatology and this, the reality of the last days. And just for myself as a reminder and no bad feelings for the person who emailed but it was a lot of, I want to know if these humans will be possessed or this type of human will be possessed and a lot of mixing of popular YouTube figures and their terminologies and are, are these lizard people, these are these people, <laughs> these things. And they listen to our talks and kind of fit right into those people kind of things and <laughs> mix everything. And the, the just of all of these teachings, especially from the jinn world, the, the dajjal world of what's happening, it's not like the groups that try to give too many facts and then everybody study the facts so we can point them out. Are they going to be like this? Are their eyes going to be like that? Are they going to have certain mark like this? It's not a, you know, it's not a, what is it, a crime scene school where we do NSI, NSC and trying to find who these people are, look into their eyes and see if this is a possessed person. This is all to teach everybody that you have to make madad. And anyone who's emailing us, you'll know from the emails you're getting from us and they're coming from me, is that you get meditation as a reply. My uncle's sick, what do I do? Meditation comes to you. Uh, the, the jinn are all over the place, what should I do? Meditation email comes to you. Anything you email us, you're going to get a reply to be meditating means and we're making a very simple word of meditation. One definitely you should have the new book that's two and a half years of questions that you possibly can't come up with a question that's not in that book and it's written more like a question and answer. That you can go to the table of comments, read the question, oh this is the answer for it. But, but what needs to be understood now is that you have to have a strong connection that this world and the shaykh's teaching is to show you there's so much more you don't know. So we say, I've never heard other shaykhs talk about jinns like this no, because they have no understanding of that world at all. The reason the shaykh can clearly describe things to you because that's the world he's from. As a result, learn how to meditate, not to find people with slanted eyes this way. That wasn't the objective, the objective was that you should have said, wow what this shaykh is teaching, I want what he has, I'm going to learn how he got there. And how he got there was by learning how to connect his heart with very powerful awliya. And as a result their energy pushed and broke through all the layers of his heart and illuminated with their lights and with their reflections what God wanted illuminated within the heart. So everything comes back to for our group and for anyone following these teachings, tafakkur. Because we're not here to give information to your head and then just make your brain to be all oh, like brain savvy, I'm going to write the you know college articles about alien beings on earth. This is about how to connect the heart, how to connect with the shaykh, the energies of the shaykh and begin to open the light of the heart. And that the world of light is all around us and that with that light it begin to illuminate into the heart, your questions will be answered there. That when you make your connection, make your connection with the shaykh, the lights are coming into the heart. Then when you sit with that understanding and sit with the connection, then the question that's important within your heart, the fires and the emanation comes to the heart and gives its knowledge and gives its reply. So the purpose of the email is so that we can send you these 
understandings that you have to be tafakkur, you have to be from the people of contemplation. What is energy battle? How to understand the energy battle? And that you should have all of the proper tools which are your ta'weez. Anytime you're going to study the world of light, as soon as you illuminate yourself all of negative forces will come towards you. As soon as you make yourself to be soft and subtle, he said, if we train with us that feel the energy, feel the presence, feel the presence, what happens? You become of a latif, a subtle nature. As soon as you begin to feel the energy, then you understand, oh my gosh, look at all of this horrible negative energy that's around me in life. So then I need the taweezes, I need all of these things as a protection and now I understand that I have to have that protection and I leave the world of ignorance that never thought of protecting themselves and I enter into the world of illuminated people whom their light, they understand the world of light and they protect themselves against every type of darkness that's occupying this earth. So I pray that people take the tafakkur, practice the tafakkur and understand that that is the opening of all openings. That's why we were teaching on the principles of Mawlana Shah Naqshband. There is no Naqshbandi if you don't have khush dardam. Just the first principle is conscious breathing. So if we know any Naqshbandi, any, anywhere and say, have you been taught tafakkur and contemplation? They say, no, and then we don't need these things. So, okay, that's great. So then you're not Naqshbandi because the first principle that Mawlana Shah Naqshban brought was khush dardan is that be conscious of your breath. And Mawlana Shaykh wrote a book, classical, was it classical Islam or Naqshbandi guidebook? Naqshbandi guidebook that has the 40, we have it online on our website, it's the 40 golden chain shaykhs. Look at each of the lives of the shaykhs and at the beginning of their life section each one has a statement on the importance of the breath. Means someone who's heedless of their breath has lost their way. Every single one of the 40 shaykhs their talk on the breath, the importance of the breath and your way is built on your breath because of the power, the sanctity and the holiness of the breath that Allah has given to you. If you don't know the breath and the secret and the, the sanctity of that breath, how Allah would open for you a secret of Qur'an, secret of salah, secret of anything or any haqqaiq. If you haven't been able to thank him just for the, the holiness of the breath that he's given. So then the tariqah has become things of ignorance and jahaliyyah that they're not practicing those realities and anybody who comes to teach those they get the brunt of, we don't know what you're talking about, we don't understand what you're teaching. So that's the reality now, everything is based on tafakkur. If they want to do the tafakkur, to bring the energy, to bring the, the ability to understand these realities inshaAllah. Got any questions from the Thursday inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Can waves of energy be heard? There are times we experience hearing of energy, is this our imagination? Can waves of energy be heard? At times we hear waves of energy, everything can be heard, no doubt. Most of everything you sabbihu wa bihamdi that Allah says in Holy Qur'an Ayatul Kareem that for verily everything praises me. And none know its praise but the people of tafakkur. So that's the ayah of tafakkur that's used as a dalil for teaching these realities. Allah said that nobody knows these praisings but everything has a praise. So it means everything has a, has a frequency, has a sound and these sounds are, 
are hearable through the heart for whom Allah wants them to hear. They can hear the praise of the animal, they can hear the praise of the wood, they can hear the praise of animate and inanimate objects for all of them have atoms and all their atoms are moving. So everything has a movement, everything has a, has a wave and that wave also can be heard if Allah wants the servant to hear it. That's why sometimes when you're sitting and meditating if there's a, a, an electrical device that causing an obstruction in the airwaves you may pick up sounds when you're meditating and sitting in silence somebody turns a fan on. That fan is, is obstructing the airwaves as a result of its movement. So what would have been coming through sort of on a smooth vibration and you may not have picked it up as a result of that fan it's hitting something and as a result can open up for people to hear certain sounds. So sometimes electronic devices you sit next to them you think that you're hearing sounds through that. So that is a possibility for somebody who is sort of training themselves and doing their tafakkur but it's not necessary to search for it. So we don't try to turn things on to hear sounds but what's important again is to make the connection, make the connection with the heart and then it's the heart is opening. If awliya want that as a part of training because everybody has a different reality and a different purpose then that's what they'll release the reality of hearing, the reality of seeing, the reality of time, the reality of breath. In an instant when you train it comes on Allah's time. You could be at a market and all of a sudden the power of the breath begins to open for you. Where you're taking a breath and it seems to be as an infinite breath and the power of it and this reality is understanding. Because Allah has written at this time, at this moment this servant will experience that. Lucky for the servant who studied with the shaykh so that they caught it and understood that event that was coming. Because Allah writes what He wants and what is destined will appear towards the student. The lucky one is the one whom studied for that reality so when it does come it's something that identified. Some events came before they had a shaykh. So that when they're hearing the shaykhs they're saying, nobody understood these things, I'm only hearing it on this video about I was attacked, this was like this, this energy was like this, I felt this hearing, I felt this breathing and then that again will bring up the event and, and a credibility for them that these people are talking about what I experienced, I should sit with them to understand it. So alhamdulillah, Allah's, Allah's mercy inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. How can we repair hurt relationships in the highest way according to Shaykh's teachings? How can we repair earth relationships? Hurt relationships, damaged relationships. Hurt, hurt relationships in the highest way? According to Shaykh's teachings. Yeah, the hurt relationships is by, by good character I would imagine that anyone we hurt we quickly ask for, for their forgiveness. The tariqah is continuously teaching not to break hearts, not to break the heart of a servant of Allah for Allah resides within the heart especially ashaqeen and those whom are lovers of the Divine. That's Allah's home that you're sending an earthquake to, a difficulty to. So means then it has even an immense reality of the hearts of Allah's servants whom they have that love for Allah So we quickly try to ask for forgiveness for the, the harm that was done and try to correct our character so that it doesn't keep continuing. So quickly asking for forgiveness is the highest way in which to relieve a difficulty. That asking forgiveness from the servant that we hurt and asking forgiveness from Allah to because we're doing something that has an immense means we can hurt many things and do many different types of sins but the hurting of people and 
hurt so much that it enters into their heart then is a, is a big no-no especially in tariqahs because they teach this is the house of love and Allah resides within that house. So that's a direct hit into the Divine the Presence and that's why it's very dangerous to anger Allah like that. And we pray Allah help us and protect us from that type of difficulty. Now if the servant hasn't hurt and the person is mentally off and emailing, you hurt me, you hurt me, that's something different. Because we've done this for 25 years, we're going to get emails now that I've been hurt and, and they're spiritually saying they've been hurt and that doesn't count. We're talking about physical relationships and people that you know that you've had an interaction and your interaction was crushing into their heart. Spiritually if you think you've been hurt or it's been tested that's between you and Allah He tests his servants the way he wants inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam I want to be a murid but I'm active in dawah and another thing when my friends hear that I, they say, don't do that. I want to be a murid, I'm active, I'm active in dawah and my friends say, don't do that. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> One is to be a murid and lose those friends. <laughs> Because again we don't judge people but the ahbab and the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad is very precious. This life that we're talking about it's like walking on water. So surround yourself with those who have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad because already 99.999 other people don't. Your TV doesn't, your radio doesn't, no, no movie does, no, nothing has that love so you're already surrounded by hatred. So but in your physical contacts find the, the gardens of roses, find the gardens of zikr, find the, the shaykhs and the students of love and muhabbat and you have the safety of that garden of love and ishq of love of Sayyidina Muhammad once we make that as the first step in our life is that, show me your friends, I show you who you are. Then I try to find the best of friends so that people will know, oh this is a, a shaqeen, look at him and all the people he's with, they all look like good loving people. And when they talk to our people they say, very kind, very loving natured people, so that's a good sign. And then the tariqah comes and teaches that you can't give what you don't have. We're not like the people on YouTube that uh, belligerent, angry, violent people going to the park and insulting Christian people, Jewish people, insulting everybody, debating everybody. We're people who we fight ourselves, we debate ourselves, we fight our ego and shaitan that's within me, not the shaitan outside of me. So we spend many years just fighting ourselves. At that point of fighting yourself, if you're victorious they'll give you permission now to go out and help people. But if you can't fight your own demons how you possibly could want to, to deal with outside people and that's the, that's the danger of da'wah is that when you're not a da'i and in, in the tariqah understanding that we're not people who reach to purify ourselves, most likely I'm going to have difficulty with people, I'm going to argue with them, scream at them and you know, give the wrong impression and maybe scare away more people than I bring. So the tariqah has its own system that come first and lose those people, come towards the circles and the gardens of paradise. If it's paradise you want you should find a circle of paradise. And that's why the live broadcast and these are the, the realities of paradise. And then busy and I, this is only from our way. So I busied myself trying to take care of myself. And for many years of that seclusions and teachings and, and crushings and we're like you know the, the concept of the moon. That many rocks have been thrown, many crushings have been taken place and as a result of all the crushings then, then you, you become semi-ready where Allah wants to send upon the servant inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If some of our ancestors practice something that involved jinn or some other beings, does that affect the next generation negatively? If yes, how can we resolve it? 
if some of our ancestors practice something from the jinn world or spiritual world and it affected us neg negatively? Yeah, anyone who practiced anything and anyone whom their sins and the sins of the father reach to their children. So that's a general rule in life that the sins of the father reach to the children. So that's already an energy that is coming upon ourselves and what we inherit. If they lived a life within a spiritual world dealing with mischievous things, difficult things, then that can be very difficult because the life of spiritual beings are thousands of years. Their battles are thousands of years old. So if, if you come across one and harm them in a way that was not through Divine permission, they're going to come after you for a thousand years because that one's still alive. And that's why then you see there are people whom have generational difficulties that continuously follow them. So those are difficult situations. Those in… from those realities whom Allah guides, then that guidance is a relief from that difficulty. Means they come into the associations of awliyaullah who are from the different categories. Means there are seven different categories of pious people including the jinn and angels and Allah will then assign from these categories and the protections and the ta'weez and all of the trainings so that to protect the servant from that arrangement and that difficulty that is continuously coming after them. So that to stop that inshaAllah, if by Allah's will only. But that, that's why those worlds are very dangerous and that's why you know jinn fighting and this kind of kooky stuff is, is not nice at all. The tariqa doesn't ever do that and the shaykhs are only trained to make du'a and everything else is spiritual. So that that du'a Allah is the defender. When they come and they do and they're running towards Allah and their focus is to pray, to pay, to, to fast, to do all of their usul, to have love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad then you're an innocent servant moving towards Allah Anything that comes after you Allah's your defender and that's what they want is that Allah to defend us as we're trying to worship and move towards the love of Sayyidina Muhammad If we direct ourselves, now let's go fight these people, these beings, these things then Allah's not what we're running for, we're running towards making mischief with these different spiritual beings and that would be a life filled with mischief. So that's not the, the purpose and the direction the tariqahs are teaching, they're teaching the ways of perfection. You busy yourself with your Lord, anything else that's coming after you, your Lord will busy Himself with you to come after those things that are trying to attack His servants and those whom He loves, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Alaykum Is zodiac related to spirituality or is it haram? Zodiac? Or is it? Anything we teach is halal and from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad If you come across anything that we teach and you ever email us that we're doing something and is this haram, your email is going to go to the trash. So that's harsh, that's really bad that to… to and that's not your question but I, we get a lot of these questions. Shaykh, I want to get taweez, send me an article on taweez, is this taweez haram and shirk? Are you possibly asking the shaykh that he would commit a shirk knowingly and tell you to, to enter into a shirk? No, these are, these are the words of the, the Wahhabis and Hezbu shaitan and these specific issues are what Hezbu shaitan want to teach and propagate. We said before to take away the key of protection. Your key of protection is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad 
So everything they teach and every reality they're dispensing are immense realities. We said out of a hundred Muslims, 99.9 don't know any of this. So if you, who are you going to ask? From the 99? Well of course they don't know any of this. If Allah inspiring you to have this teaching then the adab of the teaching is the shaykh what is the teaching for this alhamdulillah and then put it on. From what little knowledge you may have is going to be a great barrier in your faith. And that's what Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Khidr said to Sayyidina Musa when he went to go learn the knowledges he says, from what little you know is going to cause us a great conflict. How can you have patience with something that you know very little about? So tariqah is teaching us, come very empty, come very sincere to the shaykh, I don't know, even what I know I don't know, that teach me. Why would they teach something that's the forbidden? But the people of, of, of satanic teachings and, and those who work for shaitan, of course they don't like ta'weezes because it's the shaitans that it's defending. They're not called amulets and talismans. A ta'weez is very specific, it's called the hijab and ruqya. So these other words they use, those are satanic words to confuse everyone. They don't put bones on something with skeletons and say, put this on and these bones will protect you. Those are amulets and they don't use talismans. They are ruqya, means they use Qur'anic writings, they write the names of awliyaullah and their healings and there are hadiths for those words called ruqya. But talismans and, and you know these, these are English words that they try to fool people with and say that this is this, this is that. So yeah, no it goes you'd spend the whole few days just trying to deprogram people. But the best manner is to come and say that whatever the shaykhs are teaching these are from the heart of awliyaullah, from his shaykhs and from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad For imagine if he taught anything of a, of a great incorrectness that heart would have closed and that fires would have closed and every emanation would have closed. The fact that that tap is flowing means then the tap is open and these fires are reaching towards servants so that they can achieve what they have to achieve of immense realities and protections in the last days, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Is feeling a sense of em emptiness in our life a positive thing since we are to negate ourselves? Thank you for everything. Feeling a sense of, of, of em emptiness, is that something positive in this day and age because we're supposed to negate ourselves? No, because the, the negation is to counter arrogance, it's, it's not to, to, to be a depressed and lonely and sad individual is what the shaykh is talking about. The shaykh is talking about empty yourself of yourself for the only way to reach your reality is without yourself. So who, who's blocking you from understanding what we're teaching? Yourself. Who's stopping you from meditating? Yourself. Who stopped you from getting inspirations into your heart? Yourself. So then the teaching comes and says, get rid of that guy, get rid of yourself. So then how to get rid of yourself is then the whole tariqah, do the zikr, do the salawats, do the istighfar, tell yourself all the time, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Whatever God has given to me I'm still nothing, empty your cup so that you're always coming to them with an empty cup so that they will fill it. Doesn't say go and now make yourself depressed, lonely sort of isolated person and no, it's nothing to do with that. It's just to bring your arrogance down and to be nothing and to rid myself of myself. And one whom is ridding themselves of themselves and feels these fires, feels these lights, feel these meditations, they should be very happy with the energies and the love of Prophet flowing through their heart. Now are you going to be filled with people all around you? Maybe no because it may be a 
So you're on your path by yourself, doesn't mean all your relatives are going to now listen to the YouTubes and sit with you to, to read the books and to understand because if somebody's been chosen it's them that has been chosen to reach these realities. That's why you study them for yourself, learn them for yourself and then you have a face amongst people and that's why Khalwat al Anjuman means that you learn to do your practices, keep your connection, feel the happiness of that connection and know that everyone else around you doesn't have that connection nor is it meant for them to have the connection. So then they feel, oh I'm very isolated in this understanding, say, yeah you're, you're walking the path by yourself for its realities but you can be among many people and be normal to them, InshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Why is it so difficult to get over fancy imaginations wherein we are the heroes? Why does it keep coming back in our minds? How to defeat it please, help. Yeah well why is it so difficult to get rid of fancy imaginations in our minds where in our imagination we're like the superheroes? Well because we live in a life of, of uh, fantasy, we by spiritual peop people by their nature love fantasy movies because something in our reality it reminds us of the world of light, it reminds us of the spiritual world that the material movies, material shows they're not real, they're not of that understanding. So one is the fantasy world and then two all the video games that are sort of embedding images into their mind that they're the hero, they're going through each level, they're fighting each level, which okay you can think that, that you're a hero fighting devils and think of yourself as a hero fighting your bad character and then bringing yourself to be humble, humble and that I'm nothing and I'm going to help the poor and the innocent. So alhamdulillah whatever works for you then you try to, to do it but make sure that it's always a humble character. The Ya Rabbi grant me these, these powers, grant me these light, grant me this ability to defend the poor and the weak and that to come against my own bad character and you would be a superhero according to the heavens. And in one trying to rise from the dirty life of this earth is greeted with an abundance of joy as they're trying to ascend into the heavens. The heavens is, is a, always glorifying a servant trying to rise, means makes the heavens very happy when somebody leaves the satanic abode and tries to rise within the heavens and to reach the realities. What time is your maqrib sir? Huh? InshaAllah Subhana Rabbi Ga Rabbil Izzat Amma Yaseerfoon Wa Salaam Al Mursaleen Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha